Okay, so we're here and I have my model up. Her name is Keisha. Um, she just came up. Um, I wanted to do some throwback designs from the 80s, the hip hop era. Um, and I just thought it'd be fun to kind of create just a unique character to go along with that. A couple ideas that I have on some future projects, but I wanted something just for this tutorial. So we're going to talk about creating clothes in ZBrush, clothes in ZBrush and clothing in ZBrush, different articles. Um, I won't be able to cover everything because this is a small uh, tutorial, but I think once we're done, you'll uh, very easily have the idea and you'll understand what we're doing. Um, so we're going to talk about extracting clothes from our, our base model. So let me go ahead and just go ahead and set that up so we can get started. I want to turn everything else off. Oh. This one to turn everything else off. All right, so we just have a basic model, a pretty simple sculpt, and everything's in play in place. I can see um, exactly what it is I want to do visually, um, and so I have a shirt here that I have a little logo on and everything, and let's see, and some other things here. So originally, this is what the outfit came to with the extraction. So let's talk about just making the jacket. Um, let's create the jacket fairly quickly. I think we can do this. Um, here we go. All right. So my user interface, once again, is going to be a little different because I have it set up for how I work. I'll include a copy in the downloadables um, so you can use it if you like, or you can actually watch the tutorial I did earlier on setting up your interface. You can find it. It should be pretty easy to find it on CG Sculpt. Um, and you can set up your own user interface, whatever works best for you. I'm left-handed, and I kind of think a little differently. So this works for me. Um, all right, so we're going to use the Extract tool quite a bit, primarily the tool we're going to use. And then we're going to, that's right here under your Sub 2 palette, and then you can see the Extract button. Um, it's lit up right there. And the next thing we're going to use quite a bit is going to my geometry palette and we're going to use my Z remesher. Uh, when you first open it up, you're going to be at about 50 in both. I like to take the adaptive size all the way to 100 or all the way to zero. Uh, zero is going to give you less detail to make it simple to simplify it without breaking down the entire tool. And 100 is going to give you the most detail. You can also do half, same and double. All right, those are your options. So half will give you half of what the poly count is you currently have. It'll make less faces. Uh, same, it'll try to keep it pretty close to what you have and double will double what you have. All right, so I'm gonna leave that at double. I'm gonna leave my adaptive size to 100 and I'm not using, all right, I'll leave my curve size at 50 right now. We don't have to bother that too much. Um, everything else you can pretty much leave alone for the Z remesher. Um, I'm going to use my inflate brush. Uh, I'll use my clay builder brush and I'll use uh, probably my standard brush. Those are the three brushes I want to use most. Uh, I'm going to use my curve brush. Let me show you. I have a few more brushes in here than uh, the generic setup. My curve tube, tube brush, I'm going to use that. And my curve strap snap brush, I'm going to use that too. Those two brushes come in really handy when you're making clothes. And we'll probably use a couple of stitch brushes to add stitches, depending on how much time we have. Now, keep in mind, this is ZBrush for illustration. So the thoughts that I have is if I turn my character here, if I turn my character here, or look here, does it work for my illustration? All right. So that's a little different than uh, ZBrushing or creating things for games. Um, so my technique uh, in this tutorial is just designed for that. So I'm going to hold control down. And I'm going to just set a mask here. Let's move this down by holding the space bar. I'm going to slide down right about here. And the wrist right about there. And I have to make that adjustment. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to hold control down. I'm going to click my strokes. And I'm going to grab my lasso tool. All right. So let's go from the angle here. Uh, it's a little too far. So I'm going to undo. That's a little better. And let's see, I'm going to get rid of the, the, the mask that I don't need. So hold Alt down, Control and Alt to reverse. 
make sure I don't have anything extra that I don't want. Go back, I'm gonna go hold, hit control while I'm holding control again. I'm gonna select a rectangle and I'm just gonna hold alt down. Let's remove the extra, all right. If you hold the space bar, you can actually move your mask tool. So I'm gonna go right above the waist. Okay, good. And so that's a good start. And then I wanna go up here and I'm gonna manually fix the neck. So I'm gonna hold control again and click my strokes. I'm gonna go to freehand, go to freehand and I want a nice crisp erase. So I'm gonna hit this um, alpha while I'm holding control down so that it understands I'm selecting this alpha for the mask. All right, and use the bracket sheet, the bracket, I'm sorry, the bracket button to change the size and then just hit control and alt and let's clean that up a little bit. I'm thinking in terms of how I would like my jacket to be to start off. Uh, let's go ahead and clean right down the middle. Hold the shift and alt and just scroll up and down. It doesn't have to be perfect, just something that's recognizable. All right, make sure I always check to make sure I didn't ruin the back or go through. Uh, when you stroke directly onto the object, it, you, you're usually okay. But if you use your rectangle, it'll go all the way through. If you use Control and Alt, it'll go all the way through. Okay, here we go. So that's a good start. The next thing I wanna do, check this out. Notice how it's a little blurred here. I can go in and kind of help clean that up. All right. And I want it to be as crisp as possible. So I'm going to use all to just clean that mask up a little bit on the other side there. I have my symmetry on, so it's happening on both sides. Yeah, clean that up just a little bit. All right. There we go, making sure I didn't leave any additional mask. Now sometimes it'll happen where I end up leaving a uh, partial mask anyway, that's okay. All right, so here I have my sharpen mask and my blur mask. I have those directly there because I use them quite a bit. But if we go down to the masking tab, you'll see blur mask and sharpen. So if you're looking for that, it's gonna be right here in masking. And I'm just gonna go ahead and sharpen that, hit it a couple times, make sure I have nice crisp edges. Now, once I do that, I think this is a good form for the jacket. I'm gonna go down to my extract. Now, right now it's at 0 .0035. I have a generic um, a generic number I like to start at, so I'm gonna go 0 .0065, hit enter. Um, and make sure that your double is selected and the T board is right. So this is a thin border that's, um, what we're gonna have selected, and I'm gonna hit extract. Now, when you hit extract, it's gonna give you a sample of what it looks like. And we can see, all right. So I have to make a decision, is that pretty good? Does that work for what it is I wanna do? And I think so, but let's, let's pretend that it isn't. Well, the moment that I move it, it goes away, and you get to do it again. So let's just change it for the sake of changing it. Um, let's assume that's not perfect, 0055, hit enter again. I'm gonna go extract. And it's not gonna make much of a difference. It's gonna be probably not recognizable, the difference. All right, let's say this is good. Now I click accept, and now it's created an additional mesh for me. So if I go over here and I look on my sub two palette, I can see here that it's created an, ad an additional layer, right? If I go back here, I'm gonna select this guy and turn this guy off by double clicking and selecting this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove that mask clicking off screen, holding control down and remove the mask. And now I'm gonna go to um, my jacket layer. I'm gonna change the name. Just come down here to rename and just go jacket. Click okay, all right. So that's the bulk of that. That's uh, pretty much the technique. I'm gonna just show some additional techniques to kind of give it a little more flair. Um, let me switch a couple things. It's pretty bright. I'm going to go to my skin shader and I'm gonna go from white to gray. Uh, so go to my color and let's uh, use blue and get a nice gray, a little lighter and fill object. I have both my MRGB, my material and my RGB selected. So it filled as one color. The next thing I wanna do is look at the active points. So it's seven 
uh, 75 that's that's pretty high for what we're doing so I'm going to click Dynamesh um, and just convert it and make it uh, lower active points so now we're at 140 so we knocked off 500 easily 500 polygons of points um, so we have a smaller mesh easier to control and it's going to keep my file relatively small now because we're doing this for illustration once again we have a lot of leeway like I can get a file that goes up to uh, you know 20 million um, points easily and that's okay because I only need to print out a pose or print out a uh, perspective and go into Photoshop from there but oftentimes we say hey, a file can get too big and there are little things we can do like using Dynamesh to make it smaller um, in my intro to ZBrush tutorial I covered Dynamesh briefly enough for anyone to jump in and go ahead and use it uh, effectively all right so check that out if you haven't seen it and you have questions about Dynamesh the next thing I want to do now is begin to shape let's go ahead and start to shape out our jacket so I want to give her the cuffs um, I want to make them a little longer than what I had in my original so let's go about here just a little bit more exaggerated all right yeah that'll be fun all right I'm going to sharpen that mask again and I'm going to inverse it start to start to uh, pull it together I'm going to select my inflate brush and go uh, Z sub so I'm going to go to negative instead of adding I'm going to subtract it now I can use the inflate brush or I can just use the move brush so if I use the move brush I just simply push things in just get a nice little uh, not too much of a difference but just enough here or I can use the inflate brush I'll do that on the other side and it works a little quicker so I've turned this down quite a bit let's say maybe five yeah and very uh, gently touch my screen just enough to that we can visually see a difference all right up here there we go mm -hmm. so we're off to a good place so since we're here I'm gonna go ahead and add those ridges I don't know yeah I'll go ahead and add them just because all right and I'll show you how we do that I'm gonna to go to my alpha palette and this is a good trick uh, if you're comfortable with alphas or if you're not I'll just uh, I, this should be pretty easy to pick up I'm just gonna go ahead and grab uh, a Z alpha block just a block uh, alpha and let's go ahead and pop this guy out so we can keep it on the screen put it over here and let's see I'm gonna to go to my modify tab and I'm going to take my H tiles and I'm going to slide it over and it gives me that ridge so I think I need something like 14 maybe 15 13 let's go just type in 15 all right and I want to switch um, to my drag rectangle option and just hold shift down to snap my screen let's see all right so that's how I'm going to create those ridges there but my resolution is too low I don't want to do that just yet so I'm going to go ahead and remove the mask actually let's undo it all right now I'm going to remove the mask and I have enough of a ridge there I'm going to go ahead and divide it again and we're going to get it to a mid well that's too far so 562 should be fine I'm going to go ahead and start to add some of the ridges that I want to go in our jacket so I want to go to my curve snap tool tube and make this a little smaller and I'm going to mirror both sides and just snap all right and so I have to delete because I divided my dynamesh I have to delete lower so I'm going to click delete lower here um, that will be on your tube palette and your geometry it would be right here and you can go lower res higher res delete lower delete higher there you go just in case you haven't used that or haven't had that problem um, just want to make sure I show you that okay and so I'm gonna go ahead and delete yeah let's delete that so in our next lesson what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll use the snap tube brush and we'll go ahead and create the ridges for our mesh